Let's be real guys, football is about money. As much as I hate to say this, football nowadays is just like a business. We all want to believe that the most important aspect of football is still actually the football. But unfortunately nowadays, the sport has become so big that money got involved and has arguably become the most important aspect of the entire game. So does it help that people like me make videos about money and football? Oh, probably not. But still, it's interesting. So we're going to have a look at the most valuable 11 at the World Cup 2022. And I'm pretty sure that you guys cannot name the entire 11 if you can let me know in the comments down below without watching this video but just to compare before we start let's have a look at the 2018 world cup most valuable 11 and this was a much easier time the likes of neymar messi eden hazard coutinho kevin de bruyne were all still in this team crazy thing is in 2018 ronaldo wasn't even in this 11 but i'm not showing you the entire 11 on the screen right now because there's one player that was also in the most valuable 11 in 2018 that's still in the squad in the 2022 world cup let me know in the comments down below if you know who that is. I think this is a fairly easy one. But without further ado, let's get right into the most valuable 11 at the 2022 Qatar World Cup. We're starting off in goal and let's be honest, this really isn't a surprise. Belgian goalkeeper Thibaut Courtois is the most valuable goalkeeper at the tournament with a market value of 60 million euros. The Belgian goalkeeper is only 30 years old but it seems like this guy has been in the game for ages. We all remember his time at Atletico Madrid and Chelsea. But after a rookie start at Real Madrid, he is now doing very well for himself at the club. Being a very important part in their Champions League win last season. So far things have been alright for Belgium in the World Cup. They won their first game against Canada and as I'm watching this they're currently playing against Morocco. It's still nil-nil in that game. Thus it stands right now he's still keeping a clean sheet. Let's see if he can keep that for the entire game. His market value right now is 60 million so that means that goalkeepers like Ellison, Ederson, Marc-André Ter Stegen and Jordan Pickford have a lower market value than Thibaut Courtois. In 2018 the goalkeeper of this 11 was Marc-André Ter Stegen with a transfer value of 80 million euros. So Courtois market value isn't really at that level but as per now yeah i agree i think that he's arguably the best goalkeeper at this tournament it's time to move on to the first of three english players in this 11 and i hate to say it guys the english text is a little bit real but also these three players are absolutely insane definitely deserve to have their value deserve to be in this 11 as well and the first player is trent alexander arnold the market value of 70 million euros puts him on par with joao Cancelo, which i also could have picked for this 11 but i didn't even though i think that joao Cancelo is a great right back actually he plays left back for Manchester City so that's the reason why I didn't pick him he can play on both sides let's be real but I love him on the left hand side where he plays for Manchester City where he can pick out that Trivella pass literally insane that guy's passing is absolutely ridiculous but on the right hand side I'm going for Trent Alexander-Arnold the 24 year old defender for Liverpool he might be the most valuable right back at this tournament but so far he still hasn't played a single game for England it's obvious that Southgate doesn't value this guy I don't understand why I think that Trent Alexander-Arnold is such a great player honestly on the ball I don't think there are many right backs better than him defensively sure okay he can improve a little bit i still don't think that he's a bad defender definitely not i said it numerous times i would love to see this guy in midfield his technique and vision definitely allows him to play there and in a sense he would also be relieved a little bit from his defensive duty he still has to defend but there are still like four players behind him who can also cover if he doesn't track back but like i said he's a great player at the tournament in 2018 kimich was the most valuable right back his market value was 60 million so lower than trent alexander arnold but yeah i really hope that we will see trent alexander arnold still play at the world cup surely he will get some minutes right it's time to move on to the first of the two center backs and this one comes from the netherlands my home country it's obviously matthijs de Ligt. after leaving ajax in 2019 after a ridiculous season many people thought that matthijs de Ligt would be the next best defender in the world and i have to be honest i thought so too at juventus things were all right for him he had a rocky start but became better and better until he left for bayern munich last summer at bayern munich he's been great since the start of the season but the crazy thing is in the netherlands a lot of people are hating on matthijs de Ligt, saying that he's a little bit too chaotic when defending which sometimes yeah i i get that i see that also but still this guy is a great defender and we all have to realize that this guy is only 23 years old but the fact that his value is 70 million euros definitely makes sense to me so far he played one game for the netherlands at the world cup against senegal he didn't play in the 1-1 draw against ecuador but perhaps against qatar he will be back in the starting 11 his market value is 10 million shy of rafael Varane's 80 million value at the 2018 world cup he isn't the most valuable center back in this 11 because next to him we have the portuguese ruben diaz who has a market value of 75 million euros ruben diaz won his first game with portugal 3-2 against ghana where cristiano ronaldo scored a penalty as well he played the entire game and the next game that he will probably starting as well will be on monday when portugal play against uruguay cristiano ronaldo against luis suarez that's something that we all want to see but it's most likely going to be ruben diaz versus luis suarez in this game because the center back will have to defend luis suarez and i don't think that right now there are many defenders better at that job than ruben diaz two years ago he joined manchester 
Manchester City and immediately made an impact. And even though that Portugal conceded two goals against Ghana in their first game, I'm pretty sure that they're looking to keep a clean sheet against Uruguay. And Ruben Dias might help with that. His market value of 75 million is just 5 million lower than Rafael Varane's in 2018. Again, who was in the most valuable 11 at the 2018 World Cup. And I have a feeling that Manchester City aren't planning to sell Ruben Dias anytime soon. Because let's be real, why would you if you have such a great defender on your books already? It's time to complete the defense with the left back of this 11. I could have picked Joao Cancelo here, like I said before, but we already talked about him. So even though he doesn't feature in this 11, he still got a little bit of the spotlight. But the player I'm going for a left back is Alfonso Davies. They have the same market value, so I can pick him ahead of Cancelo. I don't know if I would have done the same thing if I had the two players in my squad, if I were to be a coach of a team. That would be a difficult one. I don't know. I think both of them are great players, but let's talk about Alfonso Davies for now. Canada lost their first World Cup game against Belgium. Definitely not a disgrace. I mean, Belgium are a great team, but this already means that their game that they're actually playing later today against Croatia will decide whether they will be already out of the tournament or still have a chance of qualifying for the knockout round. Of course, Alfonso Davies played the entire game against Belgium and the same will most likely happen against Croatia. The Bayern Munich defender is still only 22 years old, but he already has the same market value as Marcelo, who was in the 2018 most valuable World Cup 11. And with his market value of 70 million euros, he leaves players like Nuno Mendes and Teo Hernandez behind him. It's time to move on to the midfield and we're starting off with our first player. His market value is 100 million euros and the player I'm talking about is Federico Valverde. I could have gone for Pedri or Bellingham here. They all have a market value of 100 million euros. But in this midfield and in the attack, we have two more English players. So I thought it could be a little bit overkill to put in another player like Bellingham here. So that's why I've gone with Valverde and this guy definitely deserves to be talked about. The Uruguay midfielder has been at Real Madrid since 2018. When this guy plays, he has a ridiculous drive, but this season he has been absolutely insane for Real Madrid. He already scored eight goals and at the age of 24, this guy is now finally becoming a first team player for Real Madrid. Valverde played for his country in the World Cup opener in a nil-nil draw against Korea. A very disappointing result, which means that on Monday, Uruguay will have to win against Portugal to still have a chance of proceeding to the knockout round. The market value of the players who were in the 11 in 2018 were a little bit higher than the market value of Valverde. For example, let's take a look at Eden Hazard. His market value was 150 million back in the days, so 50 million more than Valverde. But four years later, Valverde is worth more than Hazard and is arguably also the better player right now. It's time to move on to the next player, the most valuable midfielder in this 11. You guys probably already guessed it. It's Phil Foden. His market value of 110 million makes him the most valuable midfielder in this 11. But just like Trent Alexander-Arnold, who was the most valuable in his position, Foden has barely played for England. England already played two games, a 6-2 win against Iran and a 0-0 draw against the USA. But over those two games, Foden only played 11% of the available minutes. And if you ask me, this is a little bit strange. For Manchester City, he already has 11 goal contributions across all competitions. He's having a great season, so you would think that he would deserve to play more for the England national team. But let's hope against Wales that he can maybe start the game, because I think that Foden could be very important if England want to go far in this tournament. In 2018, his Manchester City teammate Kevin De Bruyne was also in the most valuable 11. He had a market value of 150 million, 40 million more than Foden. But if Foden keeps doing what he's doing, I'm fairly sure that if Manchester City will sell him one day, that the fee will be higher than 150 million euro. The last midfielder that we're going to talk about in this video is Jamal Musiala. To know Pedri, I know it's kind of a crime. I would love to put him in this 11, but I feel like in recent times, I've been talking about Pedri way too much on this channel. So I thought it would be fun to put a different player in the spotlight. And Jamal Musiala also is pretty deserving of that. Musiala played for Germany in their terrible tournament opener against Japan. The game that by now everybody knows they lost 2-1. But today on Sunday, they have a chance to redeem themselves. The only problem is that it is against Spain. The country that already won 7-0 against Costa Rica. And to be fair, made the best impression on me personally. So things aren't really looking that good for Germany. But for Jamal Musiala personally, okay, sure. Getting knocked out in the World Cup wouldn't be that great for him either. But the fact that he's 19 years old is already a starter for the German national team and for Bayern Munich, where he has a market value of 100 million euros, tells you that this guy is truly having a great season. In the Bundesliga, this guy already has 16 goal contributions in only 14 games. He also already scored 12 goals across all competitions. He's only 19 years old. This guy is born in 2003. And I personally have a feeling that this guy will reach the very top of the game if he continues like this. For the attackers, are going to start off with both wingers because the striker of this 11 is the most valuable player. If you guys still don't know who that player is, let me know in the comments down below. Just take a gamble, but you will find out soon enough. But first, let's move on to the left winger of this 11. We all know that Brazil have some insane talent, so it's about time that we will start to talk about a Brazilian player. Not going to be Neymar, it's not going to be Anthony, but it's going to be Real Madrid's Vinicius Jr. The 22-year-old already has a market value of 120 million euros, which is fully deserved after his amazing campaign last season. Across all competitions, Vinicius managed to get 20 plus goals 
goals and 20 plus assists as Real Madrid won La Liga and the Champions League. In only one game at the World Cup, Vinicius already did what he does best, assisting a goal while his team won 2-0. In 2018, his Brazilian teammate Neymar was the most valuable player in this position, with a market value of 180 million euros. But Vinicius now is the next best thing from Brazil. And with Neymar out injured, it's a perfect opportunity for Vinicius to become the leader of the Brazilian national team. The right winger of this 11 is Bukayo Saka with a market value of 90 million euros. Let's start off with doing a little bit of a comparison because in 2018, the right wing of that 11 was Lionel Messi with a market value of 180 million euros, which is double of the market value that Bukayo Saka has right now. And I know that you really can't compare Saka with Lionel Messi, but so far this World Cup in only two games, their stats are pretty similar. Messi scored twice for Argentina and Saka already scored two goals for England as well. Last season, Saka was great for Arsenal and this campaign for Arsenal, he already has 10 goal contributions in 14 Premier League games. And just like with many of these players, it's sometimes difficult to forget that this guy is so young and only still 21 years old. England are practically through to the knockout rounds and I have a feeling that Saka will become one of the most important players for England in the knockout round. It's time to move on to the most expensive player of this 11, who's also the most valuable player in the 2018 World Cup 11. And you could arguably say that this guy so far has been the best player at the tournament. Because Kylian Mbappé already scored three goals, gave one assist in only two games. And as crazy as it sounds, these numbers are normal for Mbappé. In Ligue 1 and Champions League, he already scored 19 goals, gave another five assists, and sometimes he can act a little bit spoiled on the pitch and on the sidelines. But ability-wise, you cannot criticize Mbappé. This guy is already a World Cup winner, and this year, people don't have friends as their favorite. I personally don't even have them as my favorites either. But currently, they're not playing that bad. And with a player like Mbappé, who's currently in form, you always have a chance of winning the tournament. And it would mean back-to-back -back World Cup wins for France. If it will actually happen, I cannot tell you that right now. But definitely keep an eye out for France and definitely for Kylian Mbappé. So guys, that's the video done. Let me know in the comments down below which country made the best impression on you at the World Cup so far. As always, be sure to like the video, subscribe if you're new to the channel, click my videos on the end screen right now, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace.